normal. Split, like, what does that affect? Like? Because it's um, when I change the intensity, it's going to. Um, like what's the difference between like a 50 pulse width and like a 100 pulse width? Because when um, it's how long that, how long the the width of oh, that wave. How long is. the pulse is. How long the pulse, pulse duration. Is. How long is uh, it? Uh, if I think with mouse, what happens to my mouse? So a smaller pulse width is a really skinny pulse. Yeah. And a bigger pulse width is a wider so long pulse. Yeah. Long time. Yeah. What, what happened to my tank? Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. Right, so let's let's change it to um, I'm gonna change the pulse width. And once you get a contraction, you're in gate theory. I mean, you're in, in endorphin, endorphin theory. But as long as it's between one and ten pulses per second, because watch, okay. I'm gonna change. I'm gonna change. I'm gonna turn frequency. down the intensity, and now I'm gonna change the pulse. Uh, whoops. The frequency. I'm gonna change the hertz. I'm gonna change it to fifty. Okay. Well, I hit myself in the face. You I swear. are. Okay. So the first thing you're going to feel, you should see, feel tingling. Okay. okay. It'll, it should be. I didn't change any of the other settings, uh, Marco and David. It should be. It should be the the, the milliseconds should be lower, right? It, it's going to, but I'm I'm not going to do it yet because I actually I'm a, a what ten, a what techni, then I can I can change the pulse width. For more sensory, which is lo less than 100. But I'm going to show the tetany because we use tetany when we're trying to fatigue the muscle. So, okay, so. Um, You're still on normal? Okay. I'm, on, I'm still on normal. Would you, for example, let's say his extensors are really tight and you want to stretch them without having to put some pressure on the wrist, Would you could you use this to contract his flexors so he gets the stretch that he needs on his the, extensors? You, um, <laughs> Maybe. I don't know if I I feel I like that's kind of stretching the extensors at the expense of the flexors, though. Because you're going to fatigue the flexors trying to stretch the extensors. Yeah. I mean, to, let me think about that more. Let me work, think about that more. But then if you think about it, you're also strengthening the flexors. So it kind of works out making yeah, the flexors tighter. Yeah, but usually what happens, listen, I would not do that, Marco, I would not do that with a, a stroke patient. Because just to let you know, they say that the, the wrist flexors are eight times stronger than the extensors. And we know that with a stroke patient, they want to go into this flexion or flexor pattern, so I wouldn't so want to do that. Increase it. I don't want to increase it. Yeah. The other thing is you have to keep it in a stretch for 30 seconds for it to be efficient. Bene bene beneficial. If you or have me in a efficient. contraction for 30 right. seconds, I'm going to want to hit you, right? Like yeah. That's going to be really uncomfortable. Yes. All right, so tell me when you start to feel tingling. Feel it. All right. So now, it's, it should be tingling. Now we're going to see the tetany. You should see this. Well, we're, you should just see this. You won't see the. You shouldn't see the bicep. How long, how long do you do that for? Yeah. There it goes. And then I can That's back off. That's kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> how long do you do you want to do that for? Depends on what I'm trying to accomplish. If you were trying to decrease spasticity, how long would you? I would do. Uh, how, how like holds, bursts, or uh, what mode? Uh, I would change it. Um, I would probably do it with IFC because it already has presets. And it would be on for like 10 seconds and off for 50. Well, that's Russian, right? Well, yes, but you, there's other settings down here for, um, for that. For, you know, Russian is for you're trying to increase, mu technically you're trying to increase muscle, muscle strength. strength. There is controversy with that, so that's not always true. But we want, with Russian, you're trying to activate the muscle while the, the the e stem is on, so right. I want uh, as I start to feel the contraction come on, uh, the st electrical stimulation. I'm trying to do whatever that action is, oh, really? and we try to do that with like um, uh, spinal cord injuries, those type of things where they're we're trying. They might have a little bit, but we're trying to get them to get more. So that's a lot of the time. Yes, they use it in high end athletes and stuff like that, but. If we're looking at just in the clinical setting, that's when we would use it more. So now, um, so that's tetany. I would use that for like, uh, just let you know, like with someone who has tight uh, upper traps. So you could use this and use it as a IFC unit and set, put it on one of the settings so it's on um, that tetany for, you know, 
10 seconds, but it has a recuperation of you know, 30 or 50, I think that's one of them. And then it cranks on, and it hurts and hurts and hurts, and then it relaxes. But then it's just on a cycle for however. No, does this have that capability? You can set it up no. on this. Uh-uh. Doesn't you have to do manually? I have to do manually. Count. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. How can you do it? You, you do the DJ. Just count and turn it down. Really? Yeah. Count and turn it down. Oh, well, this is a home unit. All right. So, um, okay. So does that make sense for tens and, uh, and IFC? So the only thing with IFC is you have four. You use this machine. I was, you guys came in a little late. This machine has doesn't give you a manual setting. You have to use the presets. So I'd almost use tens. Usually tens is a little more comfortable with patients, but they don't. They really shouldn't know the difference. What are the different modes on there for? Yeah, burst, yeah. normal. Or do you ever use them? Yeah. It depends. Um, let's see. How do I get this going again? Constant, normal, and burst. Uh, Thank you, Lee. You're welcome. All right, so normal. Oh, set. So let's do. I don't want that. Is. SD. So that was strength duration. Strength duration. Strength duration. That, that's just. Um, strength duration has to do with. That. I hope you don't charge too much. I don't have. I'll figure out. Five points. So oh. indeed. Five pole for tens? We don't not to know like burst or uh, MRW SD or five poles or Oh well, I, they were just asking about that. I'm, I'm trying to get Five pulse is like four taps and then it relaxes. Okay. And so they might have some a few. Okay, so is that what you feel now? It's, it's not doing anything okay. right now. Tell me what you feel. Turn up just a little bit. There you go. I'll open mine. Two, three, four. It's three right now. Oh, that was four. Yeah, it's four taps and then it relaxes. Is that first? Uh, by pulse. Okay, so I it only allows me to change the pulse width and the time. So it's just three. So let me bring the settings down. So let's do. Okay, tell me what you feel. Versus. Did he talk about accommodation? Yeah. Yes. And he said that MRW was for that. He said MRW manually or like Mod automatically modulates. modulates. Yes. Okay. okay. So, so we why would you want use to use modulation, right? Because we don't. Because the body gets accustomed. No, I'm saying that's what that's what we would use, use with the patient. in the clinic. Yes. If you're sending it home with them, you put it on that, and it'll just automatically yeah. change. Yeah. And you can, if you know, but if you're playing with it, I do. Mo I do normal. Now, would you modulate every single parameter? Or would you do? Could you do one or two? Or like Bill said, we have to do every parameter to avoid modulation. Can you just change the frequency? Is that considered modulation? Because <laughs> in the text and his own slide, it if says you just change the, the frequency, or if you modulate. yes, they can't, they right. can't be modulated. So, but, you were to do, but, try to so frequency. So all of a sudden you're at 30 pulses per second, and you move to 40 pulses per second, and then you move back to 30. That's, that's modulation. A, that's modulation. Or you could change. What amplitude? Amplitude's going to change. You could use amplitude as a accommodation to to. Uh, so the question is, you can do them individually. You don't have yeah. to do. You don't have to change all the settings. You can do them individually. Has, it, it, you can change yes. the settings. Uh -huh. oh. So you you know, well these these are very simple. You have very little control on how much modulation you have. So it might go, you go da 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 da, and it you know slows down da 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 da, and then you know it, it, it's, there's some type of set up in the on the machine that says this is what how we're going it's like to. Random. Yeah. Okay. It, all right. So does that make sense here? This is the same as this, except you're using four pads instead of two. Because you can only get the um, interferential if they're crossing and they're canceling each other out. If they're running side to side, there's no cancellation. And they're right. going back and forth. Do you right. do sensory or conventional yet? I can't. We. Uh, I can. So let's move it back to uh, normal. So I'm going to put the, uh, it's at 
50 hertz. So it um, 50 hertz. So that's um, anything over 30. If you turn it up uh, to a high enough intensity, it's going to cause tetany. So usually we say endorphin theory is one to 10 pulses per second. Anything 30 and above is going to get us sensory. So when you say hertz, it's frequency, right? Yes. Okay. We're going to talk about hertz. For okay. So what I'm going to do is I have it at 50 hertz. The 50 pulse to, width is 100. Hertz. That's microseconds. The US pulse width is the pulse duration, right? Yes. And so then, uh, and so I have uh, the frequency uh, or the rate is at 50 hertz. All together. And then the pulse duration is 100 mic microseconds. It's not milliseconds, it's microseconds. And then um, the intensity, I want tingling. You should just feel a tingling <coughs> action. So you turn the hertz now I'm changing uh, higher so that it becomes more frequent. No, I want to bring the hertz down because it's more sensory driven. I can bring the intensity up a little bit. I thought one to ten was in was endorphin and higher was hertz to tell his depth. Hertz tells how fast the taps are going. Yeah. Oh. So that's the frequency. It's the frequency. So your frequency has to be But if we're talking about full the width, uh, how how Big is the pulse itself. Mm -hmm. I want it lower for sensory. Smaller, smaller, skinnier pulses. Yeah. Yes, and usually we say about <coughs> 90 microseconds. So it is between 30 and 150. Wait, microseconds. microseconds. Okay. That's how. 50 to 80. 50 to 80. Okay. What? He said 50 to 80. That's frequency. We were taught 100 to 150 for frequency pulse per second and 50 to 80 microseconds. Yeah. But that's what the book for, says for, also. For gate. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. okay, okay, that's fine. Okay. Everyone's a little different. I was taught less than 100. Anything over 100, we're going to do endorphin theory. I don't think those are th those are the text numbers. Okay. I don't think we got right. that from the text. So. Okay. And I think endorphin was, what, the opiate was 200 to 300. 300. Depends on what your goal is. But I would say over 100 microseconds. Okay, so tell me when you feel tingling. Oh, you know why? <laughs> the timer went off. Come on, loser! What's wrong with you? No, it's on nine. It's on. Uh, let's see. And are you on normal again? Yeah, I'm back on normal. All right. So, it's, okay, here we go. So it's at 50 hertz. Yep. Okay, tingling. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just remember with gate theory, I want to take it to we call, it, oops, max sensory. So I got to back it off. So I want to see a little bit of muscle contraction and then back off. Is that max sensory or is there muscle contraction? No, you back off a little too much. I think. Okay. So there, oops, so there's a little contraction. I'm supposed yeah. to back off a little bit. Yeah. But that with, if I would have left it where it was, well, normal because there's no modulation, <coughs> you know, you would probably stop twitching after a little bit of time. So now I just leave it on. So I, it's just a constant tingle. Constant it's just tingle. a constant okay. tingling. So after it should shut the gate quite quickly if there is any pain. But once we turn the machine off, the pain will probably. How much pain out. does this cover? Like, quite could thin. you could you poke me in the hand with a needle? Mm, I, <laughs> I don't like play. Oh, let's try it. Let's try it. Payback for that question. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What other? Can I explain anything else on the? You stay on normal pretty much. Well, for most no, what I, if I was the first time I got on the machine? Like, let's say you're in the clinic here in a couple of weeks, and they go, Garrett, uh, I want you to set Mrs. Smith up on uh, on the tens unit for gait theory. Well, first of all, I'm gonna go check out the tens unit, so I know kind of I would put it on normal first, so I could, you know, I could try it on myself. Oh, I see these, and then whatever their modulation then I would slap it on for my patient for some type of modulation cycle. Okay. But for normal, you know, that's just for me just to say, oh, yeah, okay, I've, I, I feel okay, got back off. And then I, when I get to my patient, I know that I can, once I got it set up, then I can move it over to a modulation cycle for, for the patient. But if, because sometimes it turns off and you got to wait and you got to wait, mm -hmm. and then it kicks back on. So you just put on normal, get your parameters set up, and then put it over onto modulation. That's how I would do it. That's how I do it in the clinic. So. 
I hope that helps. This is one of the things I want to cover. That last Wednesday lab is going over any of the, the, the this, any over uh, OT, I mean uh, ortho. So not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday. Right, because next Wednesday during my lab is still not practical, but the following Wednesday and anyone that has technically has makeup hours, that will be done during that time too, but just so that we can knock it all out. I have a question. Um, for the, for the pre-mod IFC on that thing, he said uh -huh. you can, you only use two electrodes. And then two electrodes, electrodes and four electrodes. Quadrupolar four use four. Is that correct? So, just think IFC is cross. <laughs> yes, and that's what I understood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he said if you're, if for the pre-mod, you can only use two electrodes, how would you... He said that because only channel one comes up. That's where he got. Well, that. and I'm but, then I'm saying, is that truly IFC or is that tens? It would be tens if there's you no would, interferential. Well, and you're only using one channel. Right. I don't see how that you could be doing interferential. Interferential. Right. Okay. So. If you connected another one, would would the other channel come up? Because uh, I thought you had to do. Oh, you know what? That's right. You know what? Because there's two channels. I mean, you could you could run. You have four things off one channel. I don't know what the pre mod is. I don't know what pre mod. I don't know what the parameters are for pre mod. I I, I need to look at that. Uh, uh, um, Will you be in lab today? Um, what? Will you be in lab today? I think he's going over all this. He is going to go over all of it. Pre-mod operates with a carrier frequency that is not pre-modulated. Oh! It's in the world. It's in the world. It's in the world. Something with endorphin theory, I'd probably put it at about 110. And then... Um, then it go, we'll go back down to 100. No, this is, this is different. This is that's no, that's pulse width still. Now, that's pulse width. Mm. Oops. Pulse one and pulse two. Because of quadrupolar. Why is it not changing over here? Oh, because we don't, we're in quadru quadrupolar. Hold on. We're also in quadrupolar. Doesn't that mean that it's going to be running out of two channels? No, two channels? not necessarily. No, it has both of them highlighted. All right, I have to. I got a referential because it, it's all tweaky. What do you use the second channel for? Well, let's say you want to do here and you want to do here, or you want to do. One patient here, and you got another patient over here. They can use the same machine. I really don't even know the difference between the interferential and like, conventional talk. Oh, you missed my talk. Yeah. It was a good one. <laughs> interferential is always cross fibers. Okay. Cross wires. And uh, they end up canceling each other out, so you can narrow down. 5,000 hertz, if you look over on the... Yeah, yeah. So... Think of, a, think of a, you know how you have a pool and you have the waves that are going like this and when they hit, they flat, they cancel each other out and then they go. Same with this. So one set of um, um, electrodes or a base of five. And they, they constantly sw alternate. They're alternating. So sometimes they're going this way, sometimes, sometimes they're going this way. Down, some, well, they're going... They're not going to be going sideways. But they're, going they're, they're going a, a diagonal. Oh, diagonal. So... What happens is, what the baseline frequency is 5,000. Well, the other one, the other set of electrodes are at 5,001 up to 5,150. So, use if we're use if we're thinking in math terms, each of the 5,000s interfere with each other and cancel each other mm -hmm. out. Whatever's left over is the one to 150. So it's more comfortable for the patient, and it goes slightly deeper into the, the tissue. Okay. Um, so depending on what my, my um, objective is with my patient, do I want one pulse per second, or do I want 150, or something in between? And I can do that on most machines, but this has a pretty strict setup where it will only allow me certain parameters. But if I... If I look on the, the chart over here on the on the right, mm -hmm. with a tens unit, I can um, I can go I can just I can adjust all the parameters. I can go from tapping, which is a sensory where it feels like there's a tap, but there's no muscle contraction, mm -hmm. 
That's hertz. You're talking about hertz right now, right? Now I'm talking about uh, pulse. Pulse per second. Pulses per second. So pulses per second from which would be our like microsecond. No, microsecond has to do with the pulse width. Width. Okay. How long that is. So PPS is directly related to hertz. Yes. Okay. Pulses per second. Yes. To hertz. So whatever the hertz is, or pulses per second, if I want to do gate theory, I want to do low pulse frequency, okay. 1 to 10, and I want a muscle contraction. For gate theory. For endorphin, For endorphin theory. theory. For gate theory, I want to, the parameters are different. I want high um, hertz or okay. high frequency. But low width. Low width because I want sensory only for gate theory. Yeah. So then it should feel like tingling. Oh, and then you put those on nerves, whereas IFC you put on motor points. Well, yeah, but if, I, if, if it's sensory, there, it's, the, it's still going through the muscle fiber up to the spinal cord yeah. to shut down or shut the gate on the pain sim, uh, signals. Yeah, so. I know Phil told us something that if you put, get pain down here, you're most likely going to put it more proximal, proximal. On, on the more proximal nerve root. So it, I, I wouldn't disagree with that. Okay. I would agree with that. So but I, was, I was kind of playing around with it last week. Yeah. Or, I never wrote that one. These are not really totally playing around with it. I looked at like the, the map of the nerves. Uh -huh. I was putting on, trying it out. Sure, like, sure. I go numb like down here. Yep. I did it right here. I go numb in the hand. Yep. Flip it over, same thing. Well, you got the median nerve. Yeah, median nerve. And you got the ulnar nerve. The ulnar yeah. nerve, and I did. You could do the radial nerve on this side. Yeah. You could do musculocutaneous up here. And musculocutaneous. For the biceps and you know for the biceps the and uh, brachial radialis. Brachial radialis. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Yep. But, do you want to do ultrasound? We didn't do it. Really weird. Yeah. I, I mean, I was warming up the gel so we could do it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Now, underwater. Now, underwater.